will the building work around the Olympic Park ever end? Will West Ham avoid relegation? Questions, so many questions. But today's video isn't another exploration of the London Olympic Park and its never ending building sites. We're gonna go beyond the Olympic Park to kind of the area just outside of the Olympic zone. Stratford at Bow, or Bow, really, is what we call it today. Just Stratford Bow, a name taken apparently from the shape of the bridge that spanned the River Lee here. It was kind of bow shaped. And we're gonna go looking for one of the most underrated, overlooked historical buildings in London. I've never been there before and I'm not entirely sure I know how to actually get to it. So there's a little bit of jeopardy involved in today's video. Let's hope we can find this mysterious building, which is said to be the oldest brick building in London. But first we must cross the lower reaches of the London Olympic Park, get past the London Stadium and cross the Bow Back Rivers. East Bank development seems to be slowly taking shape now. I suppose unintentionally what would be interesting about this walk is to see all this development here around Stratford which has been the focus of attention well, really since the mid-90s when they first came up with the idea of Stratford City, what is now the Westfield Shopping Centre over there, and the Olympic plans came out of that scheme, if you like, that template that was laid down. And you've got the contrast between all this activity, the focus of, what you know, 20 years of activity, if you like, over to just the other side of the rivers, an area which has been... Uh, you know, developed in the post-war period after it was heavily bombed and then became deindustrialized. But there's, I think we're gonna see quite a contrast between the East Bank and the West Bank of the River Lee. It'll be interesting to see, won't it? I don't know if you can hear that, but there's some quite funky old music blaring out from the Greenway. I wonder what on earth that's about. So we're just going to go across the top of the Greenway. <laughs> this is the old sewer pipe, as I'm sure you'll know. So we're heading down now to Pudding Mill. Got this rather pleasant green bank here. It's now a major kind of uh, cycle path and walkway called the Greenway. It sits atop one of the uh, major sewage outfall pipes that runs out from East London out to Beckton. The sewage works there. It's built by uh, Joseph Bazalgette as part of the original London Sewage Treatment Works. But once upon a time, they used to call that literally what it was. Sewer Bank is what it was known as. And if you'd been walking along there in 1931, in the morning, just after 6 a.m., you may have bumped into one Mahatma Gandhi, and we'll come to that a bit later in the walk. Now we pass through this tunnel to the new Pudding Mill station. This old brick railway bridge passes through here into this gleaming new concrete railway works. And this is the gleaming brand new Pudding Mill Lane DLR station. It's got a wonderful bit of architecture, isn't it? And 
And this is the site of one of the new developments as part of the uh, Olympic Zone plans. This one I think is just called Pudding Mill. Gives you a good view from here of all the developments stretching along Stratford High Street. You can see the total transformation of this area, can't you? Here we have a, a stink pipe. You find these in your sewage pipes in there to release some of the gases out from beneath the earth. I'm sure some of you in the comments will remember when this was a, a thriving industrial area. Lots of kind of light engineering, various kind of food processing, all sorts of industries were down here. On the other side of the lee, it was more like chemicals and soaps and things like that. Before that, it was an area of marshlands caused by the Bowback Rivers. And there were a series of mills down here. Three mills being the most famous one because it carries on in existence as a film studio here, Pudding Mill, which I think was also known as St. Thomas's Mill. I think it was called Pudding Mill because of the shape. So it's an area of constant kind of transformation every few hundred years. And this, I guess, is the next phase of its transformation into a, a residential zone, really now, residential, leisure, a bit of culture, and I suppose the hope is tourism, I guess. Bit of a glimpse here of the old industrial Stratford. Not much of it left now. A little bit of Marshgate Lane, but... So the brick building there behind this uh, substation is the Bryant and May factory. Now it's a gated community, ironically, called Boke Water. And that was the scene of the famous Match Girls strike in 1888, I think, or in the 1880s. It led to the formation of Britain's first trade union for women. So we're going to follow Cook's Road here, round onto Stratford High Street. Here we have the Bow flyover. It's one of the borderland markers on the journey east and west. It's quite a poignant location for me, this, because when I was a student, I lived in Forest Gate. I was 18 years old, come up from the sticks, lived in Forest Gate, studied down at City Poly, or Aldgate East, and that's where our student union bar was. So, sort of one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, we'd make the walk home. And when you reached the bow flyover, you knew you didn't have that much further to go. We, uh, we peeled down a, a Kylie fly poster off one of those supports of the bow flyover once. Of course, it came with all the other posters behind it, and that was in our lounge. One of those uh, supports of the flyover is said to contain the remains of uh, a rather notorious London gangster that was said to have been murdered by the Cray brothers. And, uh, his remains were placed in the supports of this flyover here. No idea whether that's true or not, it's just probably one of those East End legends. Of course, that crossing that I've just made with ease, I didn't even make a shot of the, uh, the River Lee, would have once been quite, a, you know, tricky crossing to negotiate, the river was much wider and it's uh, said that the bridge was built after Queen Matilda fell into the river there at the, at the old ford. We've got some uh, delightful views of the bow flyover from those new apartment blocks up there. Now we're just going to walk a short distance along Bow Road before taking a turning into a lovely little space I stumbled upon one morning a few years ago. Oh. This rather interesting building led to me having a really lovely conversation with a young man there. A master diver, about to head off on his travels. What a lovely chap. It turns out, we looked up this building together, and it turns out this building is late 17th century, would you believe? Here we have Bow Church, marooned on an island surrounded by thundering traffic. There's been a church here since 1311. We want to go 
just off Bow Road along this little lane here, which is called Bow Arts Lane, which must be a new name given to it. And it leads us into this lovely little hidden gem, Grove Hall Park. There was once uh, a private lunatic asylum on this site here that featured in Charles Dickens' novel, Nicholas Nickleby. It was uh, London's largest private lunatic asylum at one point in the 19th century. I remember I first came to this park, I first sort of stumbled into it one morning and I was I had a few things on my mind, I was a bit troubled, a bit sort of anxious and stressed and I was walking around down from Bethnal Green, down through Bow. I just came upon this park and I just took a moment to sit on a bench here and I just suddenly felt much, much better. All my kind of anxieties and troubles left me. And it's always stuck in my mind as a really lovely little oasis in the city. A calming place. So we're just going to go back down here to uh, Bow Road, cross the street past the church, and we'll pick up that Gandhi story, right? That's intriguing, isn't it? William Gladstone here, former Liberal Prime Minister. I'm nervous of standing near statues now because I've seen how easily they fall over. Oh, Gladstone here is remembered as being one of the kind of great 19th century politicians. But it's interesting, I looked him up on Wikipedia before I came out and he had some pretty uh, dodgy views about slavery. He was actually opposed to the emancipation of the slaves, partly because his dad was the largest slave owner in the British Empire. And so part of the uh, agreement when he agreed to back the bill uh, that brought about the emancipation of the slaves of the British Empire was to negotiate compensation for his dad. I'll put the exact figure on the screen here, but it was over £100,000 at that time in the 1830s. Go down Bromley High Street here. That's a fine old looking building, isn't it? Some fine old London County Council blocks here. This is another fine old building here on Bromley High Street. It looks like it. Might have once been a pub. I don't know what's going on there now. This is the other end of that LCC estate. It's the old stone gateway here to St Leonard's Priory Bow, which is a 12th century nunnery, originally quite a small one, and also now an ancient burial ground. Feels appropriate that we should go down St Leonard's Road here, E3. It's kind of strange actually that I haven't really walked around this part of Bow much in the past because you've got the major attractions on the other side of Bow Road and then of course you've got the River Lee which is just down there and of course that's a major focus of attention and where I've often walked. So this little bit here around Bow High Street down to Bromley by Bow is sort of passed me by in the past. And here we have another stink pipe. Pass now into Bruce Road. It's actually a very peaceful little corner, isn't it? So here in Powys Road, we have one of the real gems of the East End. A place that until recently I hadn't really heard of, but it's an amazingly important place, not just in the history of the East End, but in the, in the history of Britain. Kingsley Hall was established in the, in the early 20th century by a couple of sisters with very sort of progressive and uh, philanthropic 
uh, aims. Um, it was a place of fellowship, a place where people can gather amongst you know, an area of great poverty. They supported the suffragettes. They also supported the, uh, the general strike and they set up as a soup kitchen during that time. And then when this place was built uh, at the end of the 1920s, it's where Gandhi came in today. When he came to England in 1931 to debate the future of India, he was invited to stay at all the big hotels in the West End, but he decided to stay in a very simple room here, which is still being preserved. This is where he spent his time in London in 1931. And as I mentioned earlier, he did those walks up along um, the sewer bank, up to Stratford and round through Plasto. And he developed a real love of the East End. I think he said at the time, love is all around me whilst I was here in the East End of London. Kingsley Hall was also where the radical psychiatrist R.D. Lang carried out some of his most experimental treatments for people with mental health conditions in 1965. I, uh, I visited Gandhi's house in Mumbai, that's called Mani Bhavan, I believe. Um, I set out with my wife and I one day to find it and it was swelteringly hot and we had our backpacks with us and eventually we went there. It's a really sort of serene place. This is great. On the street lamp here, look, at the coat of arms of the old Poplar Borough Council. They've kept the facade of this lovely old pub here, this old Taylor Walker's pub. Now a block of flats. Face mask for a bit to help with the pollution and also because I'm near the tube station and there's more people. Very difficult to make a video like this there. So I've somehow got to get across this massive road here. I think I can go down and underneath it, I hope. When you're in a territory like this, this is anti-walking country. This is where pedestrians are not included in the streetscape at all. This is where you are an uncomfortable inconvenience. It is very much uh, a world of the speeding pod rather than the ambulating pet. This is an anti-human landscape as far as I'm concerned. Uh -huh. A method for crossing the road. Down we go. underpass right so here we have the limehouse cut in fact this is the beginning of the limehouse cut cleaving away from the lee navigation and making its way down towards the limehouse basin this is a great london county council fire brigade building from uh, 1910 it tells us Interesting, rather striking building here, isn't it? It's called uh, Red Box Business Centre. So I think it's like um, office space you can hire or desk space. It's quite a wonderful building, that, isn't it? Made from shipping containers by the looks of it. This feels like an unlikely location next to this madly busy road here, the Blackwell Approach Road, to find this early Tudor manor house. Early Tudor manor house, 15th century manor house. Believed to be the oldest brick house in London. And what a wonderful building it is. And next to Bromley Hall is this really grand old public library. What a beautiful old building. Ahead of us we have a very dramatic skyline there with the iconic Balfron Tower and then Kent the Towers of Canary Wharf. All right, it's about seven o'clock in the evening so I think that's about as far south as I'm going to push. I've got to find my way now back 
over the uh, back over the cut, back over the navigation to Stratford, and then back up to Leytonstone. So I think this is a great place to end the walk. Massive thank you for coming along with me. Huge thank you to my radical ramblers and fellow travellers. And as ever, I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be, if I ever actually manage to extricate myself from this curious landscape that I find myself in. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you on the next walk. Have a great week.